Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CS News. And first off, I do want to apologize. I just moved into my brand new apartment, so that's why there's really nothing on the walls, and it kind of sounds odd. The audio might sound a little echoey and not top notch. I will fix it as soon as possible. But the main reason why you guys are probably watching this video is because the North American Shuffle has begun. So please stay tuned. In the next few episodes, I'll keep you guys posted on what happens in North America. But it seems as of right now, the top three teams are likely to be involved in some kind of trades. And as of right now, a couple hours ago, Cloud9 and Optic have already been involved. Cloud9 has officially dropped nothing. Jordan Gill. Gilbert alongside Shroud from their rosters and they've been moved to the bench but it seems kind of like a semi-retirement for these two guys likely to not return and they've been replaced by Optic members both Rush and Tarek to the lineup so huge changes so far other changes expected to come sometime soon of course to Optic as well as Liquid so please stay tuned guys as of right now based on what's been posted by Stewie2k himself it seems that nothing and Shroud will be kind of semi-retiring although they could still play CSGO in the future it seems for sure that Shroud is kind of semi-retired to be a full-time streamer very very much expected expected from him. He's had a great streaming audience for a long time, especially in the past month or so. It's grown to an enormous amount. When he Ever since he actually started playing with Summit 1G, he's been playing PUBG quite frequently this past week and having record numbers. I think he broke almost 40,000 viewers this past week. So it seems Shroud is kind of semi-retiring and nothing as well. We'll see what happens to those guys sometime soon in the future. And kind of an emotional send-off for Stewie2k. If you read his twit longer, guys, I'll post that down below as well. But I also wanted to talk about Liquid Elige. I wanted to talk about Decay, who posted this article on screen saying that Liquid Elige could be leaving. I do believe that Liege has good enough to actually lead the Liquid roster. Do I think he'll join up with the X I by Power guys? I think most likely not. I actually highly doubt that. I think it was kind of a clickbait thing to do there by Decay. I think he did maybe heard one tiny bit of evidence there, but I highly doubt Liege will join with Dazed or AZK or Swag, mainly because they can only play ESL events and being the fact they can't join for ESL Pro League Season 6 and they can't really qualify for ESL New York, it's almost too late for that. I highly doubt Liege, being a very, very smart guy, would actually join up with them and I don't think Dazed actually even wants to go to New York. So I think Liquid Elige will actually leave Liquid, but who knows where he'll go after that. And as of right now, there's also an FNX rumor about FNX going to Optic to join up with Mixwell. I, I really can't see that working out. I see that as a more of a possibility, but I really can't see it going well for Optic Gaming. Uh, let me know what you guys think about down below. I think FNX, not only can he kind of self-implode the team that he goes to, first at SK, then LG, he was benched there very shortly. I just don't think he'd work out very well because Optic still speaks majority English unless they're trying to transition their roster because as of right now, they have Mixwell, and they also have Naflite, and that's about it. So I guess they're kind of a half Spanish-speaking team as of right now. So I guess we'll have to see what happens with, with Optic in the future. I mean, their owner, Hector, he also is a Spanish-speaking man, so... Maybe Optic is a transitioning team. We'll see what happens with them in the future. But also on top of that, we had more gambling site exploits going on. And I kind of love these stories because it's like a Robin Hood story. You know, people out there that are kind of exploiting gambling bugs out there and making you guys money. Please leave a comment down below if you guys were one of the few people who actually got in on this bug for Wild Case. Actually, a website that was, was kind of targeted a couple weeks ago was McSkillet's website. Kind of cool to see that exploits are going around. I guess kind of not really cool for the gambling site itself. But this guy actually exploited Wild Case. I'll show you guys a screenshot on screen sent to me by, by Big Man. Everett, thank you to him on Twitter. He sent me that screenshot. A, a bug went around for a while, or an exploit on, on Wild Case where you could actually withdraw higher tier skins for cents on the dollar. There were skins, of course, that stat track factory new blue laminate worth way more than 21 cents. There were skins just like that that were worth 15 to 20 dollars going for 15 to 20 cents. So that was kind of crazy. I talked to Joe, the owner of Wild Case, not a sponsored payout, guys. If you guys want to actually use their websites, feel free to. I'm not being paid for this though. And he actually told me they lost anywhere from 10 to 15 thousand dollars all within that couple of hours of the exploit being out there. So congrats to you Robin Hood scammers out there. But yeah, the, the bug should be fixed shortly. Also, big shout out to community member out there who actually got this screenshot on North's very own Twitter. They actually posted this tweet and deleted it. So it seems that North has announced their newest and fifth member replacing Magis Boy. We're going to know sometime soon, hopefully, who their fifth member will be. Hopefully a DreamHack Malmo or some event coming up sometime soon. Along with that, another filled roster here. Kind of a crazy story because we have so many teams that are starting to fill their rosters. Uh, we actually have Gambit Gaming announcing their fifth member and Gamut Gaming former member Hooch was actually correct on predicting this. It was actually a Kazakhstanian player, a trial member from Tengri. So he's going to be on Gamut Gaming. His name is Fitch on screen for all of you. He'll be a trial member for three months time for Gambit. And who knows who's going to take over the IGL role as of right now. He's obviously replacing Zeus on that lineup. So best luck to them. I think still a solid lineup there. All Kazakhstan and Russian lineup there for Gamut Gaming. So congrats to Fitch all the way from Tengri to Gamut Gaming. And that's a huge sign for him. And huge news, we actually have the ESL roster lock or ESL Pro League roster lock being pushed back. 
back. So I actually mentioned this in the last episode, the team, so many teams having unfulfilled rosters, at least four or five teams right now who are going to be in ESL Pro League next season for season six have unfinished rosters. So they actually have contacted the EPL guys. And here's a tweet on screen for all of you. The roster lock has been delayed until this Friday. So that means kind of good news for all of us watching right now. That means in the next three days or so, we're going to have all the fulfilled rosters that we do not know about as of right now. So the North American Shuffle should finish up hopefully shortly this week, as well as Fnatic and FaZe Clan. All those guys should be confirming rosters sometime soon. On top of that, we do have some Twitter beef. A lot of you guys asking me, or a few of you asking me, is there Twitter beef between Mojo and Bucks? If you guys have not watched Bucks, one of those CSGO YouTubers who has taken off immensely over the past couple weeks, a great YouTuber. I'll link both their channels down below, and I can answer you guys this. Mojo actually tweeted me and DM'd me this picture on screen. No, there is no beef going on. I'll show you guys the screenshots of the conversation. Obviously, a fight over a girl on Twitter. People kind of uh, uprighting about this. Not really sure if it was actually a real beef between the two. No, they actually make videos together, and they're both hilarious YouTubers. I'm sure many of you guys know about. It is fake beef, although it was pretty obvious it was fake. They weren't trying to get views out of it. So yeah, don't worry. Mojo and Bucks are friends. Or are they? And that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. Please do me a favor, guys. What can I do to improve these episodes? Please leave a constructive comment down below, like, Jake, slow down your speech. Jake, do this instead. I do want to apologize very quickly to all the people out there I offended in my last couple of videos. I made some comments about Dennis and Shroud. Mainly about, a lot of you guys were offended about Shroud, me calling him a liar. I do apologize, guys. I kind of misinterpreted the context of the video clip that I played. So I please, forgive me. I hope you guys can. I kind of just, uh, I didn't really go into the full detail, which I should have. So I do apologize for that. All you Shroud fans out there, I am sorry. Um, so as always, hope you guys all enjoy this episode of CSK News. I am back in the brand new apartment. My roommates show up tonight as well, so the next few episodes should be a little bit different. Hopefully I can still record these things with people being all around. As always, live, love, laugh, laugh, I'm going to like you. I will see you guys all tomorrow with more CSK News and tonight with a drinking stream. So that should be interesting. So yeah, see you guys then. That was the outro. Bye.